Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look inside of Adobe Lightroom at one of our long existing but newly updated plugins, Tunit 3.0. So one of the major updates of Tunit 3.0 is that we're going to be including support for CC15 versions of Photoshop, as well as, for the first time ever, Lightroom. And so this tutorial is going to go over the details of the basic cartoon parameters within Tunit in Lightroom, the parameters that go behind making the cartoon effect, and just sort of the basic overview of the plugin itself. So let's jump right in. We have this photograph of our lovely Karen. And I'm just going to right click, go up to Edit In, and select Tune It from our effect palette. Now what I could also do, um, alternatively, is just go up to Photo, Edit In, and select the same thing. Either one will work. And in this case, I'll just edit the original. Doesn't really matter. And so here we are in the Tune It UI, and we're taking a look at the baseline cartoon effect here. It's being applied. And one of the first things you want to do when you're ever editing any pictures within Tune is you want to get the zoom control to be correctly displayed at 100%. Right now we're looking at a slightly down version of the picture, so when you're editing in anything that's below 100% zoom control, you're going to be looking at something that's not representative of the end photo. So what I want to do is I want to zoom in 100%. And so this is going to give us the most accurate representation of what the Tuna effect will look like once we go out of the UI, back into Lightroom. So there's a few things that go into the look that we have here, this kind of beautiful cel-shaded cartoon effect that we've got going. But before we touch upon that really quickly, I want to go over uh, one of the best ways to get a good grasp of Tunit and what it's capable of is to look at the preset manager. Now the preset manager has a bunch of different presets, all with different kinds of styles, um, meaning the baseline algorithm that's being put on our photograph to start with. We have a few selections here, as well as all the different effects that we can add on to those. And so a great way to see how the two of these can connect together is by looking to the presets and just kind of checking out what we've got. All of these have their own interesting effects. I know that this one's a very pretty one that I like quite a bit, where it looks almost like a pencil illustration. If I scroll down, you can get some other really cool looks. So this is just a great way of seeing how all these effects and styles work together as well as see what the plugin can do for your project. But I digress. Let's look at what is going on behind this effect in and of itself, the baseline cartoon effect. So there's three basic parts to how this effect is created. The first of which is the algorithm, which is in our style that we select. Each of these selections for the style has its own algorithm that is put into the baseline picture. For the basic comic book effect, we want a flat shaded style, but I could easily just go ahead and show you what some of the others do, just to exhibit how we're able to get a completely different look to start off with, with all of its specific parameters to give it its specific look. So again, I'm just gonna go back to flat shaded. We'll start from scratch. So one of the first things we're going to do is look at the parameters here, first of which is flatness. Flatness determines the smoothness of the transition between colors in the image, say the shadows caused by her brow or the shadows created by the crinkles in her cheeks. So the lower our flatness is, the more detailed and more dimension and texture we're going to be getting in our image. If I were to crank this up, however, we're going to get a much flatter image, and you'll see in these areas where there seems to be an edge, that edge is going to become a lot more defined. And this is going to give us more of that comic book look, the comic book effect. We're not having as much of a transition between the different colors and shades on her face. But this is a little heavy-handed. I might bring this down to, I don't know, 25. Sounds about good. Yep, so now those lines are a little, are still rigid, but not as rigid as they were before, not as sharp. Next, I can adjust Simplicity. Now, Simplicity controls how much of the color detail we're keeping. So if this number were lower, we're going to get a less cartoony look. It's going to look more like the original image that we brought in. 
But if we crank it up like it is now, we're going to get less detail and a flatter, more cartoon appearance. So just for a exhibition of what that looks like, I can bring this down to simplicity of five. You'll be able to see we're getting a little more detail, a lot more tiers of color than we were before. So this is going to add more dimension to the face of our model. But I like it where it was before. I'm going to change it back to 20. Maybe it's a little too much, maybe too smooth. I'm going to change it down to 15 so we have a little bit of those tiers. So that's our flat shaded parameters. Now we want to go over to blur. Now our blur is fairly self-explanatory. A lot of the edges that we see in the photograph are dependent upon how much blur that we have going on in the image. So if I were to crank this up, you're going to see a lot of these details, especially smaller details like those in the sweater, a lot of those are going to go away. This means that we're going to have less edges because the blur is being expanded. If I crank that up, you'll be able to see that. So if you know we're paying attention to right here, you can see that we've lost a lot of those smaller details since we're losing the edges that we had before. The threshold works a little bit differently. Instead of the area of our blur being expanded like it is with radius, threshold is telling how much of the frame needs to be blurred. So in areas where there's a lot of density in between edges, like in her sweater here, you can see there's some holes. And because of the knitting, we're able to see all the grid lines here. If I were to put this down, you'll be able to see that the threshold of our blur, now being down, is being able to bring back a lot of the detail that we had before. In fact, you can actually see it along the crinkle in her cheek as well. You're seeing that it's expanding a little bit more out. You're getting rid of a lot of those sharp edges. Now it's a little more gritty. But this isn't the kind of look you want to go for if you're looking for a cartoon effect. This seems a little too realistic, especially with the sweater that she's wearing. So I would say 15 looked about good. And so at this point, maybe I want to bring in a little more of the, her facial features, the wrinkles that are coming along her eyes, as well as the contours of her mouth and her nose. And for that, I want to go to our outlines. So for just an illustration of how outlines work, I can turn Use Comic off, which will get rid of all the lines that we have right now that are being created by Detect Edges. So if I were to turn this off, you'll see that we have a much different look and feel to our picture now. Much more of a painterly effect. It almost looks a bit like watercolor. And alternatively, I can show you just the lines, what that looks like, by selecting Use Comic and Outline Only. And I'm actually going to keep this on just to show off the parameters for our outline creation. Now, I mentioned before that our outlines are being created using edge detection. And that's what goes behind the parameter of sensitivity. The higher our sensitivity, the more our edge detection is going to work to find all the edges it can. If I were to take our sensitivity and bring it way down, maybe to say 30, you'll see a lot of those nuances in her facial features are now gone. We can't even see her lips. Her nose is mostly gone. And if I were to crank it up, we're going to get a lot of those edges back, especially in her hair, where there are lots of edges to detect. See, we're getting more definition there. Now, for the strength, uh, how this scale works is that the edges that are most apparent, especially along the contours of her face, uh, her eyes and her teeth, those are edges that aren't going to go away immediately. They're the most apparent. Um, the ones that are, are going to go away first, if we were to decrease strength, is the lines that we have in her hair, maybe some of these little dots here in her sweater. But the main edges along her face are going to maintain themselves as long as possible. So if I bring down strength a little bit, you'll see some of that definition is going away. Some of it's going away in her nose. If I were to bring it down even more, the only edges that are going to be really staying intact are her eyes, her teeth, and the sides of her cheeks, along with the collar of her sweater. Thickness works fairly similarly. Um, if I were to increase thickness, it's just going to increase the thickness of the lines that we have existing right now. And so right here, um, now that I've explained all the parameters, we're going to try and play around with our outline so that we can get the kind of final look that we want. Let's see. Yeah, maybe I want a little more definition along our chin. So I'm going to take the strength of our outlines and bring it up, say, to about 50. 
And there we're getting a lot more of the nuances in her facial expression. Uh, looks a lot nicer. And there's enough lines here to be able to tell where her chin is and where it isn't. And where her hair is starting and stopping on her neck. And I like this look. I like how it appears. And I'm actually going to go ahead and click OK. Now what, what happens when I go click OK is that it'll render the effect and bring us back into the Lightroom UI. And it looks great, but let's say, hmm, maybe I want a little more detail in those outlines. I want to tweak it just a little bit more. I can actually go ahead and, with the original image, bring it back into Tune It. We'll just edit a copy in this case to keep our original intact. If you'll notice, all the parameters that we had set from the previous iteration of Tune It are saved. And what this is great for is if you want to do some tweaks the way we are here, to something you've output from Tunit before, or if you want to do a batch render of a bunch of different photographs, put them through Tunit, you'll be able to do that as well while preserving all the same settings that you did from the last time you had it open. So if you want to take a look at Tunit yourself, try out some of these cool effects as well as the others that we have going on here, you can go to digitalanarchy.com where we have free trials of Tunit as well as all of our other plugins and some other goodies that are free for your enjoyment. Once again, I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.